Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm fine and you? Good, good. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. All right, Fabio, hi. Hi, Chicha. How are um, you? Good, good. Nice to see you. I see an Assad. Assad and Servette is back. Yes, hi everybody. Hi teacher. Hi teacher. Hey. Where are you from, Assad? Hi. I'm Assad from Somalia. Oh you're the same okay. You keep changing your profile. Yeah, I have my file. My picture. Yeah, your I swear your name looks different too. Oh, I thought maybe you were a my, different. Yes. <laughs> so yes, that, yes, yes. That's okay. So different picture, different name. So how am I supposed to know it's you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm not I'm not a mind reader. Okay, good to see you again, Assad. The same Assad. The name Excellent. Oliver is back. Niraj is back. Jose Guillermo. Good. So, um, as we wait for the rest of the class to fill up, I want to say hello. And uh, we are going to do a class on idioms. So, that should be helpful. And if you are not speaking, I want you to uh, turn off your microphone anytime you're not speaking to help uh, hear better. And then when it's time, when I ask for someone to speak, or if you have something to say, then you can turn it on again. It makes the class easier to hear. Conversations are better. Great, thanks. So one, two, three, four. So we'll wait a couple minutes, and then we'll uh, get some introductions going. Hi, Niraj. Hi, Peter. How are you? Good, good. Um, good to see you again. We only have a few people, and I don't see anyone extra in chat, but the people in the class. Uh, we also have a Paolo. But I can't hear you, Paolo. I'll need you to turn your microphone on. Did and you work now? Better. Yes, I can hear you now. Good. Okay, great. Nice to see you. Nice to have you. Nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. So let's begin um, just by uh, getting to know everyone. We have Assad from Somalia, uh, the same Assad that I've been hanging out yeah. with a few days. Yeah. The tricky guy. You duped. <laughs> you duped me. No, 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 no. My that's my name. Uh, is uh, Assad Muhammad Hussein, but uh, ah. I like Assad Hussein because uh, I find Assad Muhammad a lot of people uh, Assad Muhammad. It's a common name. Well, Hussein's also a common name, and Assad is a common name probably from where you are. So, <laughs> so yeah. you might have to make up a new name, something that yeah. <laughs> get your SEO going, search engine optimization maybe. But I'm um, so. I'm never I changed this. Okay. <laughs> cool, good to see you again. Okay, thank you. Okay, so, um, Caroline, did you save a problem with your audio? Okay, no, I, <laughs> I fixed it. Okay. It's okay now. Okay, how are you? I'm fine. Um, I would like to talk to you uh, a good experience I, I had. Um, 
I was living in Ireland. Uh, I lived there for nine months. Uh, I think that is one month I I arrived. Mm -hmm. It was a, a good experience because when I arrived there I I couldn't talk properly like now mm -hmm. and I I could improve my my speaking a lot, I think. Okay, so you lived in an English-speaking country for a long time, and you were immersed in the language, and that that was a big help. Yes, yes, the accent in in Ireland is uh, is very is very different, mm -hmm. uh, but it's it's okay for me. I mm -hmm. okay when I when I hear you. When I listen to you talking, I, I I can I can realize that I can understand uh, more. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah, I'm 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 living in the United States. I have an American accent, uh, pretty standard yes. American. Yes. So, and we'll be talking about idioms, and I'm only going to focus on. Uh, idioms that I see and hear in the United States. Um, so I, I bet you've probably heard some interesting expressions and idioms in Ireland that uh, yes. I, probably, I probably don't know about. And maybe we maybe uh, we can learn about that. Maybe you could share some with us. Um, yes. So are you there now? Where are you right now? Sorry. Where are you right now? Uh, I am in Brazil. I'm from Brazil. Okay, so you're in Brazil. Brazil now, that's where you're from. And I could, I lived with a Germany family. I could um, learn another kind of accent, German accent, but I like it. So you were living with a German family, but they were speaking English in a German accent? English. Or? Yeah, they, they are, they have been living been there for 10 years. Okay. They speak more English than German. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you pick up any German too? Sorry? Did you pick up any German language? Did you learn any German? Mm, no, because she just uh, talked in German when she, my family, uh, I was my, my job. I I worked uh, as an au pair, mm -hmm. and she's a single woman, and she talked with her family just uh, by telephone. I see. Okay. Excellent. Good story. Uh, so now we know that immersion works. Mm -hmm. So. My yeah. Yes, Paulo. My my history is similar because I arrived in Brazil five months ago and I was there in Ireland during six months as well. And my experience in is Ireland. Similar. Yeah, in Dublin, for example. Oh. Ah, yeah, yeah. We have two Brazilians from Ireland. Two, uh, two. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, do you, you felt the same way, Paulo? Sorry? You felt the same way, you get the same experience, you think? Yeah, yeah, the same experience. I like it. So, not everyone has the chance, not everyone is lucky enough to live in another country for uh, to, be, uh, to be immersed like that. I mean, I haven't done it yet, but I'd love to someday. Um, but, um, if you keep coming to these Colingo classes, it's kind of like being immersed. You're talking to uh, at least one native speaker, and, uh, and you're getting a lot of interesting insight from somebody in that country. Good. So, Fabio. Yes, Chichu. Could you introduce yourself for everyone? Okay. Um, my name is uh, Fabio. I'm from Brazil. I live in Sao Paulo. 
I am, I am a makeup artist and a eyebrow designer. I I have uh, on my hair salon. Uh, I have uh, 40, 40 uh, employers in my business. Employees or employers? Uh, employees. Employees. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I I have learning English uh, until uh, one years ago. I started. Mm -hmm. Um, I I learn in Colingo and uh, and a school here in Brazil. Its name is Wise Up. Really? Ah, see, I don't know Portuguese, so uh, that's interesting. Uh, and it, it has other meanings too, in a way. But that's cool. So you are a makeup artist. Uh, a hair, you own a hair salon, but you said you're also a designer. Yes, I I I am a makeup artist and a eyebrow designer. Uh, uh, eyebrow. Eyebrow designer. Oh, okay, cool. Designer. Awesome. All right. Well, good to have you. Very very artistic. Excellent. Okay. Cool. Welcome. So, Jose. Uh, hi, I live in Costa Rica. I studied finance. Uh, I like swimming. Uh, I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you studied finance. Are you still studying now, or are you now you are you outside of school? No, no, no. I I finished my studies right now. Okay. Cool. Great. On to the next phase of your life. Maybe. Good. Welcome, Jose, from Costa Rica. Thanks. Uh, Oliver? Oliver? Are you there, Oliver? If I'm pronouncing it right. I know we've spoken before, but I can't hear you. So maybe he's away from his computer. So Paulo. Yep. Hey. So, tell. So what about you? So you're from Brazil too. Yeah. Uh, are, are you are you in Brazil now? Or are you in where are you now? I'm in Brazil. I'm I'm living in São Paulo. Okay. And you also lived in in uh, Ireland for six months. Yes. Yes. Awesome. For six months, during, during six months there. Yeah. Studying English. And so you, so you were studying English then? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have a hard time at first with the accent, with the uh, Irish accent? I had to. Like Caroline said, the accent, Irish accent is too difficult to understand. Mm -hmm. But uh, after two or three months, I. I can understand better than when I read it. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, you were you were surrounded by it, and uh, so you just kind of learned by osmosis. You were immersed. Yeah. Awesome. A lot of situations that I really need to use English alone. This was too difficult in the beginning, but I can do that. Okay. Very well. Great. So, okay. Well, that's an awesome experience. I'm, I'm very, I'm, in, I'm envious of you. I wish I could do that someday. So that's cool. But I already know English, so I'd have to pick a different language. So, uh, um, let's continue. Uh, Servette is here. Yes. Hello, everybody. I'm from Turkey. And I study English here. Nice to meet you. Good to see you again. Thanks for joining us. Okay. Oh, okay. Entisar has joined us. Entisar. You there, Entisar? 
I see two of you, and I don't hear any of you. I think she's maybe having problems because she's joining and coming back. Maybe she's having problems. So um, let us begin. Um, so we're, today we're talking about expressions, idioms, um, and I'm going to focus, of course, on, uh, on ones that are found in the United States. But maybe if we have some time, we can ask our friends Caroline and Paulo uh, what kind of interesting expressions they may have heard. <laughs> but first, we'll start with the uh, United States because that's, I think, what more people use and more people might be wanting to learn. Okay, um, so let us look at a website together. And I will eventually share it. Uh, well, actually, I'll share it right now. There's no problem. Uh, so. Okay, and I'm going to share this link as well, so you can keep it for yourself. Uh, we're not going to go through all these, but I want to just uh, do some of that that I see. Like some of these, I don't hear very often, but I'm going to pick out the ones that I really hear. Because when you learn idioms in a class, when you learn expressions in a classroom or in a book you can't be sure if they're really still in use because the thing about idioms and expressions is they come and go. They're like fashion. So some things are in fashion and then they, they, become, they become obsolete. Or maybe certain regions don't say it. So I'm just going to give you the, what I know the, the most. So um, this one is not as... You don't hear it quite as much, but it's an old one and it's you still hear it sometimes. Your bread and butter. So... Um, and, um, yeah, I guess what I'll do is I'll just ask you first what it might mean. Maybe you already saw it, but, uh, is that, has anyone heard that before? What's the, what does that to mean to, to, if something is your bread and butter? Anyone seen that before? Maybe. No, never. Never. No. So, Vladimir? No. <laughs> um, I think we, we, ha we have uh, the similar in Russian. Uh-huh. Uh, so, nice to meet you, by the way. Where in Russia are you, are you from? Yeah, I'm from Russia. Nice to meet you, too, Anthony. Yeah. Which city are you from? Uh, I live in Tosna. It's suburb of St. Petersburg. Ah, wonderful. Uh, happy Victory Day. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, so you think you've heard of this, and so you said there's a similar a similar uh, expression maybe in Russia. What does it mean in Russian? What is the expression, and what does it mean? It's like um, what you have for living, or source for living. Exactly. Yeah, that's the same. I know that we share a lot of expressions uh, with other places, including Russia. And that is the same. Your bread and butter is your livelihood, source of income. It's exactly the same here. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So, and maybe that might come from, you know, a, a source of food. You can't, if you don't have a job, if you can't make money, then you can't put food on the table. Uh, you can't serve, you can't feed your family, maybe. Okay, that's probably where it comes from. So, right. what about, what's a couch potato? A lazy person. Servant says a lazy person. I think that's right. They're very lazy. Spend a lot of time sitting around watching TV, maybe eating junk food. Absolutely. And I'm sure everyone's met a couch potato in their lives, or maybe knows one, or maybe one of us is a couch potato. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> um, but at least now, even if we're sitting looking at the internet, at least we're learning something. So. Maybe we're not so lazy right now. <laughs> um, so a flash in the pan, I don't hear this as much. I think it's more common in uh, England, but I think it means if something uh, or someone uh, only has a short time to be popular. Yeah. So maybe, uh, um, so for instance, I could put that into a, expression or into a sentence I could say everybody thought Justin Bieber would be a flash in the pan but they were wrong so that's a way to use that in a sentence 
Um, hmm, this is kind of an old-fashioned one, but it's in old American movies and stuff. What's a knuckle sandwich? Oh, it's I uh, like to punch. Yeah. Fixed. So what, what? What? Yeah. So what's what is a knuckle? That's another word. What's what's a knuckle? Bon, bones on yeah. your uh, hands. Vladimir's, um. Vladimir is pointing at his knuckle there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's your uh, the, yeah the the joints of your fingers, and so it's just an informal, kind of a funny phrase for punching for a punch, uh, hitting someone. I, I no one really says that anymore. That's a little corny, I think. Um, but it's in some old movies, so you might see that. Okay, now this they say for some reason they say it's British, but uh, I don't think so. What <coughs> on that? I did not mean to click on that. Uh, it's I I do not I don't think it's British. I hear that a lot in the United States too. So I think this is good. Um, so Assad. Yes, sir. What's if it's a piece of cake? If something is a piece of cake, do you know what that might mean? It's very easy. Yeah, piece of cake, no problem, no problem. <clears throat> Extremely easy. Yep. So. Uh, this class might be a piece of cake for some of you because some of you might be more advanced than others. Hmm. Recipe for disaster. Okay. So just judging on the words here, this one's almost literal if you look at the words. So, um, Caroline? Hi. Hi. Do you have an idea? Just looking at the words, or have you heard it before? Um... Uh... Uh, some expressions. Expressions? Recipe for disaster, that bottom one on the screen, do you see it? No. Uh, can I, yeah. uh, a piece of cake I, I have heard. Okay, do you see the one underneath it? You see that? A receipt of... No. Okay, recipe... For disaster. Does anyone know what a recipe is? Anyone mm -hmm. out there likes to cook? Prescribe uh, the recipe. The method of uh, cook. Or, yeah. uh, it's like the instructions almost. Instructions on how to cook food. Yeah. Uh, I like to cook. I like to cook myself, but I don't. Uh, but I sometimes don't use a recipe. Sometimes I just throw things together with, without <laughs> thinking about it. It's, right. it's more interesting more exciting. So um, what is, so what, in that case, if it's instructions on how to do something, how to put something together, what is a recipe for disaster, I wonder? Maybe it means that something is going wrong. Yeah, it definitely doesn't sound like a good thing. It definitely doesn't sound like a positive idiom. <laughs> so let's see what the exact... Maybe, maybe if you have a party it's... when it's going to go to friends that they are nobody friend between them, then you can say that is a recipe for disaster. Ah, yeah, I think that's a great example. So maybe you're going to a party, uh, but th there's people you are you're... putting things together that supposed that not to be together. Exactly, putting things together that should not mix. So something is a recipe for disaster if it's going to cause trouble or serious problems. So yeah, going to the wrong party with the wrong people. Or some, if you have enemies at the party, that could be. <laughs> it's, it's, it's almost not not a, a idiom, I think. Cause yeah, it's so it's very, it's very direct with the first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's quite literal for an idiom. A lot of these yeah. idioms have nothing to do with. Like a piece of cake is not easy. Um, yeah. but, you know, a couch potato it doesn't. It's, there's no the, reason. The, the other maybe you have to know it, but. Yeah. A recipe for disaster, I, I think that everybody in the world could be understood that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you that understand, idiom. exactly, if you understand the words that are in it, then you can probably at least figure out that it's a negative uh, thing. So, if we sit around and chew the fat, which I think we all kind of do sometimes in the beginning of these classes, where we just sit around and chew the fat. Um, Fabio, have you ever heard that before? Chew the fat? Yes, you sure. Have you heard that before? Um, where, teacher? Um, on the bottom of the screen, do you see this one? 
chew the fat? Okay. Have you ever heard that? Um, gold on uh, a thread. Say it again. Uh, go, go down, go down a street. Street? 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 Mm, no. No, it's kind of hard to hear you, but no, I don't think that's correct. What is there? A, so, okay, Paulo Raphael, um, do you say you say you think you have an idea? Uh, he's. Or is your microphone? Like. I think Paulo is correct. He typed it in the in the chat room there. If you chew the fat, and you can have a I'll just having a long, friendly chat with someone. Just chewing the fat, just hanging out, and uh, talking with someone. Just you know, no big deal. Not a not a necessarily a, uh, not necessarily an important conversation, but just friendly chatter. Good. So, okay. What about drink like a fish? Does anyone here drink like a fish? Jose, have you ever heard that before? Sorry, teacher, because my microphone was doesn't work. But I think it's working now. Oh, okay, good, great. Can I ask you one question, uh, you? Please. Uh, I heard about face the music. Uh huh. What I mean, face the music? Uh, something like uh, accept the consequence. Um, to for for a drink like a fish. Uh, no, no, no. Another expression. Oh, another expression? Yeah. Can you type it for uh, me? Which was the uh, Just a moment. Yeah, okay. Everyone in the lobby, hi everyone, I see you. Um, and thanks for keeping the conversation going. Um, and I think someone might have just left, so we might have an open seat if someone wants to join the class and, and speak with us. Someone might have just left. So, so check it out. About the fact, uh, I think it's like a small talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. That is true. Small talk. Perfect. So what about drink like a fish? Uh, drink too much? I don't know. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, Jose has to go. Bye, Jose. Nice to see you. Um, yeah, so if you drink too much, especially alcohol, drink a lot if you're, if you're drunk all the time, you drink like a fish. I'm sure we all also know someone that can be described as drinking like a fish. Or maybe one of us drinks like a fish. Who knows? <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Okay, so what else do we have? Ah, oh, easy as pie. That's just like piece of cake, right? That's that's yeah. too easy. <laughs> I think we all can figure that one out. Easy as pie, just uh, no, again, it's very easy. Easy as A B C. Uh you know what else I've heard before? I've also heard mm, no. I've heard Mickey Mouse. I've heard that before. Ah, it's Mickey Mouse, no problem. I, I, I've heard it, but not everyone uses that. But that's another way to say it. Ah, it's easy, no problem. Easy as one, two, three. I've heard easy as one, two, three. Easy as ABC. There's a song about that, I think, by the Jackson Five. Okay. Um, so, I don't. Some of these I don't use very often. I guess eat your words, I guess I've seen before. So. Uh, what happens? Why would you eat your words, um, uh, Oliver? Oliver, are you there? Um, so, uh, Servet? Yes. Have an idea uh, what that might. I've seen the definition. <laughs> ah, all right. Well, what did you see? What did you see? 
uh, and say it, you say something, then you know that it's wrong, or somebody else convinces you, so then you eat your words, and you yeah. accept it was wrong. Mm -hmm. Right. So, for instance, you're talking to someone, and you're like, um, you're like, oh yeah, I just met my friend. I met this new friend of mine. His name is uh, his name's Paulo. He's from São Paulo, uh, which is the capital of Venezuela. And someone might might be like, you are very wrong. It's not the capital of Venezuela. And then you'd have to eat your words because, like, oh, why did I say that? That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> or if you're lying, uh, it could be if you're. You could be not a mistake though. It could be uh, maybe lying. I wonder. Right. Is fashion is similar in Brazil? What's that? It's the uh, words in Brazil we have. It. Oh, you have a similar. Version. Okay, interesting. In Russia, we have similar, okay. but we say uh, "take back your words," and mm. it refers to offense. Mm. For example, oh, if I yeah, yeah. offense. So like For example, if I if I offended some person, uh, I should. Uh, Eat my words. <laughs> yeah. you, you need to eat your words. Yeah. 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 Interesting. And by the way, if you notice, I've only selected idioms that have to do with food. There's different foods in all of these. That's the. Uh, that is kind of the theme for today. Um, so, what else do we have? So. Mm. So first, I want to welcome uh, Shin Yu. Is here, Shin Yu? Hi, teacher. Hello. How are you? Thank you. Good to see you again. Her lunch. I found the. And the connection. Okay, so your connection is not very good. My hi out is often broken. Okay, yeah, I can't hear you very well. So, but maybe you can type something for us. But it's nice to see you. Again. Gosh, it must be pretty late where you are. But it's good to have you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so um, who has seen half baked uh, this expert? I think it's uh, when you uh, didn't finish something. Yeah, that's kind of literal almost in a way, but it can be anything at all. Um, if something is half baked, if you didn't do a very Good job. If you did a poor job or a shoddy job. Shoddy is another word. Shoddy. Um, what else? Uh, half. There's. You can also say this is more. Uh, but half-assed is a vulgar way to say it. It's kind of mean to say, "Oh, I did a half-assed job." And it's half-baked. Don't say that to your boss or your. Or your mother-in-law, because that's not very nice. But uh, so I just taught you kind of a vulgar, almost a curse word there. If, if something is not, if you don't do a good job or something, if you don't finish the work, half bake has been properly thought. Or Teacher. Planned. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, for example, if if I finish the university and I'm introducing at the company, I don't have any experience. I can say uh, I am half baked. No, not really. No. No, it's different than that. Uh, you just you just uh, don't have experience. But um, more, this is more like um, like oh, I have this great idea. Let's go um, to let's go on a trip and uh, and uh, and uh, let's go tomorrow and we'll go on a two week trip. But you don't have anything prepared. And so it's like, that's, that's a half-baked idea. It's like, well, wait a minute, do you have enough money? Do you have the maps? Do you have a plan? Do you have who you, you know, what, are you going to take a car? It's a half-baked idea. So nice. yeah, as Shinyu said, uh, he typed the, there's another half, this is another half-baked scheme. 
it isn't going to work, so that's used in a sentence thing. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay, good. So, hard to swallow. What if something is hard to swallow? Uh, Leuvenson, I see you're here. Can you hear me? Welcome. Leuvenson? Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. I'm very fine. How are you doing? Good. Good to see you. Yeah, me too. Um, so are you, you see we're looking, looking at different idioms today, different phrases, different expressions. And right now we're looking at this one at the bottom here, hard to swallow. Uh, have you seen that before, Livingston? What did you say? Have you seen this expression here on the bottom, hard to swallow? Have you ever heard that before? I don't hear you good. Huh? Okay, there's a lot of there's a lot of noise over there, so um, I can't quite hear you. But uh, maybe we'll have someone else help you out. Anyone else know what that might mean? I guess that maybe it's something or somebody that is not very nice, so it's hard to swallow. Okay. Oh, like a pill or something? Maybe hard to do. Hard to do. Or hard to live with it. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe some words can be hard to swallow if they are so offensive. So it's mm -hmm. hard to accept and to swallow. It. Yeah, I think I like that one. I think I've heard that used that way before for sure. So maybe there's different definitions, but... Uh, yeah. Oh, and this one this is difficult to believe, but mm -hmm. um, I think I've heard it the way Servet says too. I think I've heard like, um, I gotta tell you, I am sorry. I have some really bad news, so it might be kind of hard to swallow. I've heard it like that too, which is different. So, um, but in this case, it's difficult, difficult to believe. But I know I've heard it in in other ways. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing with idioms is they can change and evolve just like anything else in language. So maybe people might start using them differently. Good. Oh, here's a. This is a great one. This is used all the time, even in business, everywhere. In a nutshell. So, Assad. Hello. What if, so, if something's in a nutshell? If I want to tell you something in a nutshell, what am I doing? What does that mean? Not. Uh, not. Uh, okay. In. Not shell. I don't know. Okay. Um, so it's putting something in a small a nutshell is a like a nut, like a food. Um, and what is that? Uh, what do you think? Not shell. Uh, hard. Yeah, it's hard. Um, so, does anyone have uh, uh, an idea to help out Assad? What What do you say if you think something in a nutshell? Maybe, maybe to put uh, several things in a very little space, mm -hmm. or maybe say something with a very few words. Yeah. Uh huh. So yeah, in in yeah in this in this idiom, we usually put it in the context of. Let me just put this in a nutshell nutshell for you. Let me say this in a nutshell. Let me put it in a nutshell. That means make it easy to understand, make it short, shorten it so that it's not complicated. So, yeah, and like a, a very stupid uh, summary. What's that, Oliver? Put something in a nutshell, it, it's like to do a very basic summary of something. Right, a summary, exactly. To sum something, or in this case, let me sum it up for you. Let me sum it up. To summarize, to put something in a nutshell. To be a, to be an Spartan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, all right, junk food. Everyone, does everyone know what junk food is? Uh, yeah. You know, what about the fast food. Fast food. Yeah, I think we've all the bad food. food that eaten. Yeah, the but so, sometimes we not like healthy food. Yeah, but sometimes we eat it anyway. 
Yeah. So, junk food. I think we've all tried it before. Like the McDonald's, McDonald's food. McDonald's <laughs> junk food. That's definitely junk food. Not the healthiest thing in the world. Large amounts of harmful substances. All this delicious stuff. Preservatives, salt, refined sugar, etc. Um, okay, so I think this is a really common one. I think we all probably know this one, but let me ask Caroline. I haven't heard from Caroline in, in a bit. Hi, teacher. Hi. What about not your cup of tea? If something's not your cup of tea. <laughs> cup of tea. <laughs> Have you seen uh, it? No, oh. but... I know. I I think it's something. <laughs> How can I say? I don't know. <laughs> um, something is like uh, not my my business. Or not. Close. It's not. Yeah, not my. Not. I know. What does it? Uh. Okay. When two people are talking, and then I introduce the. The conversation and they say, "No, it, this is not your cup cup of tea." No. <coughs> um, no, that's not quite right. It's. Uh, uh, I think Vladimir has an idea of what it might be. It's not your. Yeah, taste. it means that it, it's not in my taste. Okay. Yeah. It's not no. my type. Something that you're not. I don't you like it. In your taste. Yeah. In your taste. Oliver, what did you say? Uh, to. To continue with the with the shape of the the words, not your cup of tea. It will, it will be like not of your taste. No, your taste. Right. Exactly. You. Right. You. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So it's not. You're not into that. I'm not into that. It's. You're not. You're not interested. So in if maybe if say something like, "Hey, man, uh, do you like that girl?" You could say something like, "No, it's really not my cup of tea." Yeah, yeah, she's not my cup of tea. Or did you like that movie? Uh, I like some movies, but that kind of movie is not my cup of tea. It's not yeah. my style. Not um, on my interest. And that's even that's even newer, and it's been used for a, a few decades. But again, you may not see this in some books because when we learn about idioms and expressions, somehow for some reason in a classroom, they just don't ever use the current current slang. So this one I see way more now. This is what people really use. This is what Americans say for real. I'm not into that. No, I'm not into that. That's what they say. They don't really say it's not my cup of tea. It's not really. That's kind of old-fashioned. So, um, like, hey, do you want to go see a horror movie with me? I'm like, eh, I don't really like scary movies. I'm not really into that. But thank you. So, I know. Yeah. I'm not into that. Yeah, I'm not into that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not into that. Remember that one, because that's you'll hear that for sure, much yeah. more, much more than not my. Got the cup of tea. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of old, uh, but it's, you might still use it. Okay, all right. The back burner. I definitely have heard this. I've used this myself, so we'll we'll look at this one. What does it mean to put something on the back burner? Um, so I see uh, Sultan is here. Yep. Hey, how are you? I'm doing well. How about you, teacher? Good, good. We're just kind of talking about um, some uh, English idioms and expressions. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, so uh, have you seen this one before on the back burner? No. Uh, for me, not. Okay. Um, what about uh, we open it up to the class? Has anyone seen that? What does it mean to put something on the back burner? Maybe it means uh, to think about something from the other point of view. Okay, good guess, um, but that's not exactly right. Uh, it's hard because this is definitely a true expression, a true idiom that um, is not maybe, in any way. Maybe you give us an example. Mm -hmm. You want me to give an example? Yeah, maybe we, yeah. we yeah. could take a Can guess. We, yeah. absolutely, absolutely, I'd be yeah, happy to. So, um, I've been working on some really interesting projects lately. Um, I'm recording this new album, and I think it's working really well. But uh, and I, but my photography business, uh, I have to put put that on the back burner while I finish this music album. And I'm also been teaching online, so I just oh. I've been so putting my 
Also, is to, is to put something in a second plan, in a second form. level of importance. Right, second level. Plan, plan B, you mean? What? It's, you, 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 are in, you are on something more urge right now, so you have to put the other thing a little right. uh, so outside of your, of, your, right. of your first attention. Right, so yeah, you, you're going to be like, oh, I'll, I'll get to that later. It's, uh, the, it's like you were focused on it, but now you're not focusing. You're focusing on something more important at the moment. So it's always a project or something that you're working on, and you put that on the back. Like so, again, we're talking about food, so it's like cooking. So if you're cooking a big meal with multiple courses, you're cooking a, a soup, and you're cooking meat, and you're cooking rice. Um, maybe the soup takes a long time, so you start with the soup, and then the soup. Then you're ready for the soup to just be uh, warming for a long time. So you can put the soup on the back burner and work on the rice or the meat or something else uh, in the front because you, you're busy with that at the moment. And then you come back to the soup uh, and serve it all at the same time. So it's another cooking expression, but it's talking about any kind of project. Okay. So. Like, uh, it's, it's kind of um, oh. uh, um, leaving for, uh, for, this, uh, for the, second, uh, the second step. Mm -hmm. It's like this. Yeah, you're leaving it. You're leaving it for later. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's secondary. Yeah. Okay. So, more food idioms. What does it mean to put all your eggs in one basket? It's usually uh, don't put all your eggs. Risk. In one basket. Hey, don't. Make don't. it easy. No, it means er, no. risk. It 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 means that. Don't put all your expectation, all your trust in just one thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I heard Vladimir say something about risk, and Oliver uh, clarified saying that put don't put everything into one thing. Um, that's one. That's definitely one. Uh, uh, one definition is don't put all your trust into one person. Don't put all your faith into one thing. You might need to spread yourself out a little bit. Um, it can also mean maybe you could be talking about. You could be talking about finance, maybe. You don't want to invest everything in one yeah. thing. Maybe, yeah. you don't, maybe you want to diversify what you're uh, investing in. Maybe. So let's see what their answer is. All your efforts and resources into one person, one thing, or one plan. Because if you lose that one thing, all your eggs are gone. <laughs> yeah. everything, everything that you're working on is gone. So it's good to have multiple things going on. We have the same expression in Spanish. Okay, see, yeah, a lot exactly of these, the same. yeah, a lot of these are uh, uh, across cultures. Um, so, and I want to just since we're talking about this, I want to uh, talk about another expression, which is the exact opposite. Um, um, instead of putting all your eggs in one basket, then it's better to do something like diversify, have a couple more things. But you can go the other end of the spectrum and do too many things. If you, if you do too many things uh, and you don't even pay attention to anything, what is that? There's an expression for that too. Has anyone heard it? We, we have an expression for that too. I don't know. Maybe what? something like uh, who take a lot, don't take, don't take nothing. Uh, well, someone that has uh, many, many projects at once. Can, so, can you... many, so many projects that that they don't maybe, even do a job. Maybe don't it. spray yourself. No? Yeah, yeah, so that's it. Don't spread yourself too thin. Can you repeat the expression, please? I just uh, typed it in the chat. Oh, okay. So, um, the oh. office... <laughs> Of putting all your I'm eggs sorry, in. I haven't seen. Oh, that's okay. I just typed it. Um, so the opposite is to spread yourself too thin. If you put that means you have a million things on the back burner. <laughs> so and you're not focusing on 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 a couple of things or one thing. You have everything. You you're doing a bad job, and you might be doing a half baked job on on everything because you have too many uh, too many things going on. So. So Vladimir, is that is that the same in your language? Is that same in Russian? Mm, actually, I, I said not spread, uh, spray. 
spray. We have similar in Russia. Yeah, spray. Oh, okay. 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 Interesting. Okay. Let's continue. Oh, this is a good one. Take it with a grain of salt. I've never heard pinch. I won't heard. Um, so, Fabio. Yes, teacher. How are you doing? So, what, have you heard this before? What does it mean if I uh, take this with a grain of salt? Have you ever heard that? Okay. Uh, what? Um, this expression on the bottom. Do you see it? What does it mean to take something with a grain of salt? Have you ever seen that before? Teacher, um, uh, where where you where uh, we uh, start? What? Yes, uh, I don't know where uh, I I finish. Okay. Well, do you have a guess? Stop. I'm sorry. Say again. Uh, where uh, stop the uh, this expression? Okay. Can you you can't see it? Is that what you're saying? You can't see it. Okay. Uh, can I try? Uh, yeah, I typed it in there. So yeah, let's uh, let someone see if they can help Fabio. What does that might mean? Uh, takes take with a grain of salt. Okay, go ahead. Can I? Go ahead. It's 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 like take uh, take with the risk for the fir the first one, take with a grain of salt, and the other one take with the beans of salt. Two will be uh, opposite of uh, of taking risk. Is that right? Like positive and negative. Um, well, for one, I think these mean the same thing, mm -hmm. um, and two, I don't know if it's it's about risk so much as, um, well, anyone else have an idea before I give an example? Maybe t take with a huge effort. Um, actually, it's probably the opposite more. It's like, um, here. I'm going to tell you, or yeah, I'm going to tell you about something, but just take it with a grain of salt because it may not be true. Or uh, I heard something, um, but I'll just take it with a grain of salt because it's not, uh, it's not a big deal, um, or it may not be true or something. So, if someone says to take something with a grain of salt, um, that means you have doubts about the truth mm -hmm. or accuracy of what they say. So, yeah, you could say, you know, I heard that the teacher gave us all. Uh, a failing grade on our test yesterday. My friend told me this, but I would take it with a grain of salt because I don't think, I think we did pretty well. So yeah, Shin Yu says a bit of common sense and skepticism, right? To take something with skepticism, like no, maybe not, maybe not. Um, so let's see if we can get one more interesting. Uh, I think that's good enough for now. So um, we have a few minutes here, and I was interested in hearing a couple expressions that maybe uh, Caroline heard in Ireland while she was in Ireland. There's some interesting ones maybe that you heard a lot that maybe I don't know. I don't know if you know. Let let me think about uh, an expression. Uh, to put on a brave brave face. Okay, you've heard that when you were in Ireland to put on a brave face. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it it means uh, to hide the fact that you you are upset or or sad. Okay, that one makes sense. It's very uh, literal. Yeah. So I can I I could if someone told me that I would be able to understand them. So, all right, interesting. Any funny any ones that are maybe funny that you heard or crazy ones? Crazy Irish sayings. 
And unfortunately, I think I think Paulo left, right? Uh, we can't talk to him about it. To to get on like a house on fire. Mm, what is it? not? To get to get on like a house on fire. To get on like a house on fire. Yeah, do you know? Uh, you tell me. <laughs> to get on very well with someone. Really? Like a, a close friend, uh, someone that you like a lot, a lot. Mm -hmm. you, are, you are very, very close, very f friendly mm -hmm. to get on very well with someone. Interesting. So, yeah, um, so maybe if it's someone you meet at first. Like, um, I introduced my friend to uh, my other friend, and they, they got along like a house on fire, or they got on like a house on fire. Yes. You say that. And they became good friends right away. Yes, yes. Interesting. So that's an Irish expression. <laughs> All right. Cool. What about um, uh, any more that you can think of, or should I ask some more questions to other people? I don't want to put you on the spot. There's another one. On the spot. There's another expression. Uh, the thing with I know expressions exist in all languages, but I swear Americans use expressions more than um, even more. Like everything I say, I swear, is an idiom or an expression all the time when I'm speaking with other Americans. Uh, so, has anyone heard that? Like, oh, I don't want to put you on the spot, or please don't put me on the spot. No. So it's like, did someone have an idea? Yeah, maybe it's mean that I don't want to be so um, to to receive so so many attention. Yeah, exactly. I want to be a low profile. Yes, exactly. It's I don't want to receive so much attention. I want to stay at a low profile. Um, for instance, let's say we're at a big party. Let's, let's be discreet. Yeah, be discreet. So we're at a big party and somebody gets to a microphone and says, okay, I now will tell everyone that, I, that I'm going to introduce Oliver and he's going to come up and sing us a song. Come here, Oliver, and sing us a song. And everyone stops and is, is quiet and listens to Oliver and, and Oliver's like, please don't please, put me on the spot. Don't, don't put, put me on the spot. Like, do not, I don't want to do this. I just want to hide in the corner. I want to just have a good time and talk to my friends. So that's to be put on the spot. And Interesting. Uh, it, it, it doesn't looks like an idiom, really. Because hmm? the, the meaning is very clear, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it might... Very directly. It's easy to understand. Yeah, especially if we hear it in context. Yeah, yes. That's how I learned all my English, it's context. It's just you know, like it's, language. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. A normal yeah. use of language. Mm -hmm. And it may also come from a spot, as in spotlight. Um, like, uh, like to, when yeah, the flash. You see a spotlight, the big light that on the, the star of the show, on the prima donna. So that's the, the star of the show has a spotlight on her. But, or but, but, but the word spot could be just a, a place to? Um, I, I, I asked by, do, do you know the, the TV series The Big Bang Theory? I, I know of it, yes. So Sheldon always used to sit in the same spot. That's a different uh, use of the word spot. That's just a... a it it a just means some place. Yeah, that means a place, just a small place. Like, uh, stay in your spot, uh, and then we'll come get you later. Yeah, so that's a different use of the word spot. And I think in this expression, I think it's more like spotlight. But yeah, that's also correct. You can say, it's not an idiom, but it's just a word, a spot. It's kind of an informal place. You can say that about your house, too, like, uh, or your apartment or something. Like, oh, come over, we'll hang out at my spot. You can even say yeah. that if you want. Uh, it's very informal and friendly, usually. But it's the same word. It's the same word, yeah. But uh, so it has two different meanings. Kind of. Um, 
Yeah, kind of. In in this case, it does. Although it probably comes from the same basic thing, because spotlight, uh, it shines on one spot. Yeah, but but the spot have the meaning that be a very important place when everybody is looking, because you have a a very strong light on you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's spotlight, but just the word spot is about yeah. the, it's about the same in this in both of these occurrences. Mm -hmm. Okay, good class. We learned a lot of new expressions. Some of them we already knew, of course, but uh, I thought it was kind of interesting. Any other last comments before we take off? Take off, another one, before we leave. <laughs> so, um, I, we're out of time, actually, So, but maybe you can join me in my next class. Thank you so much for coming, and great work, everybody. I hope to see you again soon. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Take Thank care. You, I hope to see you. Take and care. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, Bye, guys. Good work.